is I wanted to get more in depth about what the birds are doing and why, and some of their amazing abilities, so their superpowers in a way, their incredible things that they do, um, their senses, their migrations, their sleep, their behavior, all that is, uh, I just find it so fascinating. You and have a knowledge of birds that is wide and deep. It is profound. And yet, even you wrote that a bird's experience is far richer, more complex, and more thoughtful than you had imagined. What brought about that insight? Yeah, so many things that I learned along the way about, about how birds live their lives. They're constantly making decisions, making choices. Um, for example, the a uh, couple of studies found that birds, when they think there's a predator nearby, they'll stay undercover and delay their feeding until the very last few minutes of the day. And then that keeps them lighter, lighter weight, more agile. They're not filling up on food, but it also um, delays the, the time that they uh, put themselves in danger. This is something I'd never heard before. Birds can sleep with one eye open? Yeah, they can sleep with just one half of their brain. They keep one eye open while they're sleeping, uh, sleeping just one half of the brain. They can get some rest and still stay vigilant. Birds on the outer edge of a flock tend to do that and keep their outward facing eye like a flock of ducks. The ducks on the outer edge of the flock will keep the outward facing eye open and uh, monitor for danger. We humans have a saying of someone who is a very light eater. Oh, he or she eats like a bird. What would we be like if we actually ate like birds? <laughs> they eat a lot. They have very high metabolism, high body temperature. They, they need a lot of fuel. And I use the example of a golden crowned kinglet. It's a tiny little bird, smaller than a chickadee. If you scaled that up to our size, we would, with the same metabolism, we would need to eat 27 large pizzas every day <laughs> <laughs> to keep up that, that rate of uh, metabolism. So they are not eating lightly. They are gobbling down food every, and there's, you know, they spend a tremendous amount of each day in search of food. We obviously have a tremendous number of seagulls in Maine, but I was struck by something again that I learned in the book that I had not known. Seagulls remind me a little bit of some humans I know in this regard. They feed their children healthful food, but their own eating habits are pretty junky. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fascinating thing that I, I learned. Several studies have shown that, and with m multiple species, that the gulls are famous, infamous for eating garbage, literally. They'll go to garbage dumps and find cast off food. They hang around fast food restaurants and parking lots to eat french fries or chicken bones or whatever happens to come out. And, but the adult gulls are doing that, and when they, when they gather food to take back to their young at the nest, they go out in the ocean or the, the lake and find fresh fish, crabs, shrimp, really healthy food. And that's what they feed to their young, even when they're eating hot dogs and corn chips themselves. The illustrations um, are, not surprisingly, handsome. How long does it take you to do one complete image of a bird? This book has a full page portrait of each species. And those paintings would take anywhere from two days to five days, something like that to do. The title of the book is What It's Like to Be a Bird. So the inevitable question, if you could be a bird, what type of bird would you like to be? A bird that lives in the tropical oceans. It's called a brown booby. They hang out on sandbars and when they get hungry, they fly out over the water and they're very strong flyers, really good at flying. So it looks like a lot of fun and then they plunge head first into the water to catch fish. And it just, it always struck me as a pretty nice life. A book like this is obviously a major undertaking. How much time do you get to spend these days out in the field watching birds? Um, yeah, not as much as I did 30 years ago. Um, but uh, I'm lucky to live in a place um, in out in the countryside on a, an old farm. So I just walk out the back door and I'm out in the fields and woods. So every day I get out for a couple of hours just walking around, looking at birds and listening and enjoying nature.